problem, but only for a moment. Fennec has misjudged it. Now Saunders, this is a great chance. 1-0 Liverpool. Terry Fennec holds his head. And Tottenham have to take it on the chin. Oh, that's a weak corner. Great. Nothing weak about Edinburgh's work. Fennec. Stewart! 1-1! Not as he thought for a goal kick, for a corner. Oh, and it's Barrow, Saunders brought it in. Spurs are furious. First of all, at the decision earlier, and then that the flag stayed down as Saunders put the ball over the line. cluster of corners as Manchester United close in. Kicks his corner, Hughes is there. He really has done everything but score in this first half. Sagers couldn't stop him that time, he needed his woodwork. 20 minutes of the second half gone. Webb's free kick, almost fell there for Mark Hughes. Sagers can't get to it. Somehow Konchelski's denied. Hit the post. Oh, and behind by Barton. The Wimbledon goal lived a charm life there. Sheffield Wednesday needed the boss to beat Notts County. After coming on a substitute, Trevor's inviting cross for David Hurst. 12 without a league win for County. Forest celebrated Brian Class' 57th birthday with their fourth successive league win, Manchester City's third straight defeat. Scott Gemmell's long ball to Roy Keane caught City on the hop, and Gary Crosby volleyed in at the far post. Well, leaving that territory unguarded proved to be the fatal flaw as far as City were concerned. Forrest spreading the play out to Kingsley Black, and with City's defence scampering back, it was Roy Keane who stooped to conquer. A Forrest double over Manchester in the space of four days. With Robert Fleck injured and having scored a reserve team hat-trick during the week, Darren Beckford was recalled and put Norwich in front after two minutes. Norwich hadn't scored in their three previous league games, Everton hadn't exactly been on a high, so what followed was somewhat unexpected, a flurry of goals. Mo Johnston making the most of Butterworth's laps. Well, coming up, a perfect example of why Peter Beardsley's at his most dangerous when he's encouraged to go forward rather than getting withdrawn into midfield. Ward and Johnston both involved in putting Beardsley clear. Goal of the day contender B, impish, stylish, brilliant. Norwich FA Cup semi-finalists equalised two minutes after the interval when Rule Fox crossed for Rob Newman to deliver a thumping header out of Southall's reach. But within four minutes, Everton, who'd gone nine games without defeat, including six draws and only six goals, were looking the sharper of the two sides. At least Beardsley and Johnston were. This time, Beardsley's ingenuity was responsible for Mojo's fourth in six games, certainly his best performance since leaving Rangers. But Norwich weren't done for, not by a long chalk. With seven minutes left, Everton's usually reliable defence were hustled out of it. Beckford found himself one-to-one -one with Southall and made it look easy. Then right at the end, Beckford completed a good day's work by making it a hat-trick. Lovely touch by Fox. A quick decision to go with the left foot rather than the right. Dave Stringer's decision to recall him fully justified. Chelsea having a bad time. Steve Clark couldn't get up high enough and the ball fell conveniently for Dane Whitehouse to put Sheffield United in front. United then returned the favour. From Dennis Wise's corner, Cole Bradshaw provided the flick on and Jason Cundy scrambled it over the line. But United are travelling well. They've now won four of their last five away games. Simon Tracy's long clearance almost going straight through to Bessons until Alan Cork intervened. Whitehouse for his second of the afternoon. A score draw always looked on the cards because Coventry don't get a lot of goals and they don't concede a lot. But Oldham are exactly the opposite. Andy Pearce put Coventry in front, but they haven't won at home in the league now for seven games. Oldham's equaliser, the sort of goal to give Don Howe nightmares, that's on how like defending. But credit to Andy Barlow and Nick Henry for taking full advantage. 
Goal of the day contender C, Mark Pembridge's free kick, came after just 40 seconds. Well, this was the most significant match in the relegation zone, and it looked to be going Luton's way until Alan Shearer outjumped Mervyn Day. Southampton's winner from Ian Dowie was dubious. Dangerous play and offside. Luton were fuming. They haven't got away for over 12 months. It's become more of a jinx than a bad run. West Ham had lost their previous six, the last four without scoring, so it was relief as much as anything which greeted Mike Small's opener set up by Martin Allen. It was an afternoon of family ties at Upton Park. Martin's cousin Bradley, least no member of the Allen clan, equalising for QPR, contender D, and that had a touch of the Clive Allens about it. It was Bradley who put Rangers in front after Clive Wilson had worked an opening. Really was a soft goal for West Ham to concede. Allen had no trouble losing his markers and there was an element of doubt about Miklosko's judgment. But Rangers are never more susceptible than when they're one up and never more dangerous when they're one down. The first divisions draw specialists, 16 so far this season. Martin Allen's shot unluckily hit the post, but luckily the ball found its way right across goal where substitute Tim Breaker was lurking. Leeds still have it. Speed. Wallace. Dangerous. Turned in by Chapman. It had to be. The supreme goal scorer has finally broken the deadlock. Dixon. There were so many Arsenal players in the middle then if the cross had been better. Still problems, O'Leary gets a header in, and then Adams kept it in play. An unusual ball, but it's effective, right finding Merson, and Merson 